Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody. My name is Savane, and I am um, the SVP of Cloud at OpenText. Welcome to our first session of Accelerating um, Digital Through the Cloud, Your Own Digital Transformation Through the Cloud. Uh, I know this is a, uh, a very hot topic, especially right now, especially what's happening uh, with the world, with the pandemic. I know a lot of you might be thinking about how do you uh, leverage cloud for your own digital transformation to accelerate some of the uh, work that you already might have been doing for the past several years. And I'm hoping that during this series, it's a, it's a five part series, today is the first session. Uh, we'll go about 15 minutes roughly with a Q&A. Um, and after that, there's a five part series in which we'll walk through different elements of cloud and how they can be leveraged for your own digital transformation journeys. So let me just kick it off today. Um, for those of you who might not know, OpenText is one of the largest cloud companies in the world. We serve um, over 100,000 plus uh, customers in the cloud, enable some of the largest of the largest companies in retail and financial services, in healthcare, in pharmaceuticals, uh, transportation, um, across the board. And we are the largest information platform for these companies. We, we do about trillions of dom, uh, dollars of commerce in the cloud, billions of transactions per year. We run our own cloud and we partner with the largest uh, public cloud vendors that are there, AWS, Google, and Azure. Um, the vision of OpenText is very simple. It is uh, enabling the connected and intelligent enterprise and small business, inspiring new ways to work. And if there was ever a time for you to be inspired about getting new ways to work done, this is it. I know, especially what's happening in front of us with the pandemic and people working remotely and uh, being able to collaborate remotely at scale while still getting work done. How do you do it? How do you do it securely? That's exactly what we've been doing. That's exactly what we've been enabling. And there's a lot of good lessons learned um, that we can certainly share with you to enable your own journeys. Um, we had our Open Text World Conference just uh, two weeks ago. This is an annual event. Typically, this kind of a conference would be physical, which means you'd be located in a physical conference center somewhere, and we'd have thousands of people that would come in and join us for different sessions to where we share about our innovations, our roadmap, our services, the work that we are doing to enable your own journeys. Um, but of course we can do that. It was all digital. But because it was all digital, um, we got a tremendous response from, uh, from people like yourselves. And not only that, you were able to engage with us much better, which means you're able to listen, literally take uh, the, the presentation materials and download them while the conversation was happening. Have Q&A in real time. So there are some really big advantages for having those kinds of events in a digital format. And we're all, we're all learning from it. I bet that once we uh, get past on the other side, um, there's going to be a lot of great learnings we take from this and enable them as part of the overall events that we do in the future. One of the big things that we announced as part of that conference was um, uh, our five clouds. And these five clouds enable your digital transformation journeys. So I'm just gonna kind of recap those five clouds and then we're gonna go into and have a Q&A session. Um, the first one is content services cloud. So content services essentially enables you to take all your in current information management capabilities where uh, you might have information sprawl happening across the board. You have different documents, file types in a shared folder, in a network folder, in a public cloud somewhere, in a SaaS provider, uh, in a hard drive. And especially when people are working remotely, those might be sitting inside a personal drive somewhere. Think of the security of that. No matter if you, there's a VPN connection or not, it's still very insecure. So we have our content services cloud in which the solutions enable for a secure collaboration, secure information management in the cloud for you. Then we have our experience cloud, which enables uh, use cases like customer journey mapping. Uh, if you're enabling new omni-channel experiences on the website or through SMS, through uh, email, through messaging, 
how do you enable that? That's our experience cloud. Um, we had our business network cloud, which is all about supply chain digitization, which is exactly what we're going to be covering today. Then we have our security and protection cloud. How do you take all the content that you have, back it up and protect it with endpoint protection, with backups, with a discovery? Um, this is critical, especially in today's world. And then finally, we had a developer cloud where if you want to develop solutions yourself, how do you take uh, RESTful services, which are self-service, and create your own sandbox, build applications on top of a microservices-based architecture? That's the developer cloud. So those are the five clouds. Um, today, I'm really excited to welcome Mark Morley, um, who's one of our leaders in the business network uh, product marketing side, to help us kind of explore a little deeper on the business network cloud itself. So Mark, welcome. Thank you, Savane. Fantastic. Mark, um, let's, uh, let's go a little deeper on the business network cloud a little bit. Uh, there may be the, uh, some audience here who may not perhaps um, uh, relate to the term business network. So let's start at the highest level. Um, what is a business network? Yeah, so essentially a business network is used to connect a community of trading partners. And by trading partners, we could either have suppliers, logistics carriers, banking institutions, contractors, customers, of course. But it's essentially to connect, to integrate to those trading partners and basically digitize the information flowing between the trading partners and across the supply chains. So it's all about removing paper from a supply chain and digitizing as many information flows as possible. Got it. So um, if you are a retailer or if you're an automotive uh, manufacturer, uh, you know, one of the big three in the US or um, some of the biggest manufacturers in, in Europe and you're dealing with your suppliers um, and you're sending invoices and POs, um, how do you eliminate the, the need for doing any of that over paper? But more importantly, also be able to scale and get new suppliers on your network as quickly as possible so you can build and transact and serve your customers better. Yeah, exactly. And many companies today, especially in the manufacturing sector, have struggled uh, more recently during uh, COVID. And it's really accelerated the growth in cloud. You know, one of our customers, ArcelorMittal, for example, um, a couple of years ago, they decided to move from in-house mainframe solutions um, service to integrate to their customers. They found that in order to accelerate and improve their customer experience and service with the automotive manufacturers they were working with in China, other regions around the world, they just simply had to accelerate their communications with their customers. They had to digitize those information flows. And hence, that's exactly what we're doing with this particular customer, Arsdor Mattel. We've removed their mainframe in-house solutions, migrated them to a cloud platform to give them greater flexibility in how they work with their customers all around the world. Got it. And in terms of when, when you look at the value of a business network cloud solution can provide to these kind of customers, is the value really at the end of the day, the cost it takes to transact an invoice? Um, and you can essentially reduce that cost from maybe tens of dollars down to cents, uh, purely because of the digitization that can happen in connecting these different partners and uh, trading partners onto a single network. Yeah, I mean, one of the main benefits, and I'll talk about an indirect benefit in just one moment, is that reduction in cost. You know, there's many, been many analyst research studies uh, conducted that has estimated it costs around $80 if you were to manually process a purchase order, raise the purchase order, put it in the post, enter it into the supplier system, et cetera, then raise the invoice. If you take that end-to-end -end process, it's around $80. If you're a company processing, I don't know, 100,000 purchase orders per year, that is a significant cost you can take out of the business but also you're removing paper. That's an indirect benefit. You're greening the supply chain, making it more ethical, making it more sustainable as well. So that's the real indirect benefit of a cloud-based solution as well, as well as reducing the costs. Got it, yeah, makes perfect sense, Mark. Um, so let's maybe go to the, the next thing, which is I'm sure in a lot of people's mind right now, um, with the pandemic uh, that has happened here and the fact that um, there's been shortage of supply of some materials, some consumable goods, frankly, in the beginning of the pandemic. And then now um, as supply has started to pick back up, 
what's been the value of these business network cloud solutions and to to sort of ex to to buy through to ride through this pandemic and enable some of the biggest companies in the world to still keep and grow their supply chain? I think the main uh, benefit really of a business network and what we have seen through the discussions with our customers during this unfortunate period is that by digitizing these information flows, you've got much better visibility around the world into what's going on in the supply chain. So if there is disruption, can you identify alternative suppliers really quickly across the business network? We have a, a central directory, for example, that allows us to identify those alternative suppliers really quickly, maybe implement a dual sourcing strategy very quickly. But uh, as I as I came back to mention um, this ability to get global visibility, uh, one of our customers, Matson Logistics, uh, global logistics organization, again, for them, it's important to keep their customers up to date of where the shipment is around the world, which container is it in, uh, which ship is it located on as it's being transported. So getting that level of visibility to where is my order, where is my shipment, is one of the key questions that customers ask their suppliers these days. And by digitizing those information flows, that information is to hand immediately. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Thank you, Mark. That makes sense. Um, you know, OpenText is one of the largest uh, business network clouds in the world today. Um, you know, we have roughly about uh, um, more than a million plus trading partners that are on the network today, which means that if there's a new company that gets on board, they automatically get get access to that million plus trading partners. Um, and we just announced in the OpenText world our uh, release, our cloud release 20.4. Um, can you talk a little bit about two or three key innovations in this release that you are uh, excited about? Yeah, so one of the ones I'm really excited about that builds on this company challenge, uh, many challenges that companies have at the moment in relation to visibility, and that relates to IoT. So we've actually integrated our IoT platform into our business network now. So in addition to getting normal shipment level visibility, where is the shipment by scanning in a barcode, we can actually take sensor data in terms of where is the shipment using GPS data, using uh, temperature sensors, humidity sensors that may be attached to the shipment or to the container or the pallet. And we can actually monitor that shipment in real time as it moves around the world. So by aligning information from the B2B transaction flows with sensor data coming from the connected shipment, it allows and provides greater visibility into that shipment as it moves from uh, manufacturing location through to the customer location. A second uh, key enhancement, I mentioned about uh, companies uh, focused today on developing more sustainable and ethical supply chains. We have recently just integrated to a platform called EcoVardis. So we've integrated our what's called our global partner directory. There's a um, directory of every trading partner connected to our network. And we are now able to obtain ethical ratings of those suppliers that are connected to our network. So as well as trying to identify suppliers where you can reduce costs potentially across the business, being able to identify ethically minded suppliers that could be part of a key program, such as developing a new electric vehicle, for example, you can actually use Global Partner Directory in partnership with EcoVardis to identify ethically minded suppliers much more quickly than previous previous uh, attempts. Got it. No, that is that is very exciting. So, uh, you know, if I had to take an analogy of that, it's basically saying that um, if a if a company like a GM or uh, like Ford um, or like a BMW or any of these other customers, if they want to be able to only work with suppliers who not only provide the parts they need, but they are truly um, complying with some of the green principles and um, the clean energy principles that they have, now they can literally just go into this um, um, Google-like kind of interface and search for the suppliers, and then Ecovadis will be able to provide, along with the partner directory, just those selected suppliers so that they can change and work only with them. Um, exactly. that, is, that is actually pretty exciting. Yeah, I know that a lot of our customers are excited by that capability as well. So it's one thing being able to green the supply chain and remove paper, but now we've taken it really to the next level by helping couplers company companies really define their ethical supply chains yeah now yeah, makes makes perfect sense you know not to oversimplify it but it's like the uh, you're taking a platform on the consumer side like a yelp 
and uh, enabling that for now the biggest of the biggest companies in the world uh, by providing the best ratings for the suppliers and uh, the green ratings for these suppliers in a single place and allowing the supply chains to become a lot more green. So it makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, what does the future look like, Mark, according to you? I mean, you, sp you speak with a lot of our customers as well as the different industry organizations out there. What's the future of BM? Where do you see it going and what are some of the challenges ahead? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned earlier on that we have a million trading partners connected to our network. Collectively, those trading partners are processing about 26 billion transactions across our network. That's a lot of data that companies can and ourselves can derive insights from. So I think fusing AI, machine learning directly into our network, we already have analytics capabilities within our network, but taking that to the next level and being able to derive insights, being able to optimize supply chains based on those transaction flows, I think that's really the untapped area that we'll be looking at next and getting tighter alignment with those AI machine learning capabilities. Yeah, so it's almost like it, you have this vision of you connect once, but you can reach anything. Absolutely, yes. Once you connect with a network inside of, uh, uh, inside of the cloud, you can basically reach any supplier, any partner. And then not only that, you might actually be able to even reach any other applications which are required to process those transactions, which might be inside the company itself. Is that right? Exactly. And, and we're really excited by some new capabilities that we have with our new API library, for example, like API connectors. So we can actually integrate and extend that integration platform now into the enterprise, connecting to ERP and connecting between ERP and CRM systems, for example. So you've got one digital backbone that can support both the internal enterprise and external enterprise as well. And as you said, quite rightly, being able to connect once to us, we take care of the complexity of solving the integration to the people, systems and things across the extended digital ecosystem. Got it. Well, Mark, let's uh, let's leave it there. Connect once, reach anything. That is a grand vision, and uh, and I think uh, you know I'm I'm really excited to see what uh, you and the rest of the uh, uh, the customer base together can provide. And I'm hoping that uh, you know at some point in the future we can come back and give an update to the audience here on how that progression is going. So Great. again, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Stephanie. So that was just a very brief overview of um, the Business Network Cloud, which is, as I said, one of the five clouds that we announced. It's uh, ho hopefully it's given you a view of how it can enable your own digital transformation journey. Um, as I mentioned, this is a five-part series. So what we'll do is we'll cover a few, another cloud in the next series, um, whether it's a content services cloud, experience cloud, developer cloud, security and protection cloud. So a lot of exciting stuff coming along in this series, but I'm, um, I'm hoping this was helpful for you. Look forward to your comments and questions, and uh, we'll talk to you another time. Thanks so much again.